Oh, buddy, I've had three jello shots and <laughs> I've got something for you. Brunch, hit it, boys. I don't ask this question fac facetiously mm -hmm. or facetiously. Facetious, facetious. Do you know who Zach Bryan is? D did you know who Zach Bryan was three days ago? Um, I think I heard his name for the first time when he started dating that uh, that girl Barstool. from Barstool, okay. and then there was like some drama about like they were both in relationships and they got together and whatever. So I've read up on that, and it seems like internet. We're both wearing Texas hats. Shut up! I know I threw mine on at the last second. Boys, solidarity. Back this week, so uh, the I, I read up very briefly. Uh, on the relationship thing if there's like a relationship thing but it's not like big 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 serious news i'm often like i wonder if this is just fans being weird like they were when taylor swift was dating maddie healy yeah it seems like it was like that he's just dating somebody and they don't approve of her or something and fans or are they the liked worst. his other girlfriend and mm -hmm. like yeah like right. that shit is whatever so you know who else liked his other girlfriend him probably while, until yeah. they it didn't work out anyway I had never heard of this guy until like two days ago, mm -hmm. and now it's his name is All I See. I, I think that he just put out an album, right? Yes, he did. Yeah. And the first, I checked out a couple songs from it. Uh, not not quite my thing. There was it, a, he's like pop country, right? Or like top forty country. Uh, it seemed there's a little more character to it at okay. least from the two songs that i listened to so he's not like he's not trying this in a small town no 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 and you know he seems like a great guy okay. actually uh, i i did a little reading up on him and i was like oh yeah this guy seems lovely okay. like he should be at barstool just be like friends with all those people well i mean he is now because he's dating somebody who That's works true. there but he shouldn't be there because he's uh, like a very successful musician <laughs> i did hate though that the first thought i got on monday when i was seeing his name for the first second and 10 millionth time was i was like this is bobby altoff all over again this is like music industry plant bobby altoff and then i thought i was like is he an industry plant and then i thought what the fuck is with every time i or anybody i don't do it as badly as anybody as a lot of other people do but i for sure was doing it, it was like the first time or the second I don't recognize something. Industry plant. <laughs> industry plant. And it's like, at some point, we didn't hear of... So like, imagine back in the day, listening to the radio. It's like, all right, that was Mikey and the Motorcycles with Baby or My Sweetheart. And being like, bullshit. <laughs> I didn't know that, those guys before. <laughs> also, Just like, rejecting everything new and saying it's an industry plant. Industry, yes, exactly. <laughs> like... I mean, technically, like any, anything that does blow up, like from a label, is an industry plant. Have you tried the new TikTok McShakey challenge? <laughs> like, oh yeah, that's organic. <laughs> Bullshit. Industry plant. Every time a new movie comes out, just yelling "industry plant" because is, a big studio put it in front of us. Perfect. Is this so? That was going to be my greater point, which is calling something an industry plant is so funny because if it's on a major label or it's from a major studio. It has obviously, a marketing budget. Yes. <laughs> it's, a, it's an industry Obviously, plant. people with a lot more money than either of us have decided we are going to make this successful. Mm -hmm. So is Bobby Altoff, who I, I never really got answers there, but I don't know if I was ever looking for them. Is Bobby Altoff an industry plant? Yeah, sure. Is I mean, Jack Harlow was the one that people kept throwing out there as an industry plant, which we know his manager, and uh, I don't know about you, but like, Following on social, like I saw the, the climb. like slow yeah. rise and the climb and everything. So I'm like, I guess at some point he got some big like distribution deal or something like that. So like everybody, even Macklemore, who he was the big like, I'm doing this on my own thing. Once you sign a some sort of deal with Sony, Sony's like, okay. Yeah, and and I think a lot of the times, like those those uh, like a Macklemore is like a good example where it's like uh, the the big labels recognize that he's got some some power to his name, and part of the appeal is like I'm doing this on my own, so they like keep up the ruse that like he is independent. You know, uh, to to follow so, up a recent episode, classic, and if we had Paramore. the term industry plant, oh my god, we would have been we would have been 
horrible to that poor girl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're podcasting in like, I don't know, like 2006. And like, and that's the perfect example of like an industry plant not being a bad thing because Paramore rocks. Haley Williams is the best. Uh, Instagram, keep it coming. <laughs> it's wholesome. It's still like the most wholesome thing that the the horrible page is throwing my way. There you go. You know who it gives me a ton of? And I've never expressed interest in this person, although I think that they're very pretty. Who? Is, uh, don't even know her name, uh, Sydney Sweeney. Oh, well, jeez. Everything is like, it's just Sydney yes, Sweeney. Yes, please. Sydney. Right. And I'm like, yeah, very pretty person. And she's done a million different photo shoots and everything. I, I'd only heard of this. I don't watch Euphoria. Yeah. Uh, I'd heard of her being on Euphoria, and I heard of a little flirtation with uh, uh, Top Gun guy. Yeah, well, I can't think of his name. Uh, Bobby uh, Altoff. Yes, uh, Glenn Powell. M- Mikey in the motorcycles. <laughs> uh, Sydney Sweeney. Mm-hmm. Uh, best boobs in Hollywood award, according to her grandmother. Oh, I was gonna say who's giving that out? <laughs> yeah, her grandmother. I feel like if the if instead of the world getting more considerate, it got a little less considerate. Because I say this all the time, like right before thinking of other people was in vogue, being horrible was the most in vogue. Yeah. So if like we had a few more years of that and the MTV Movie Awards were still a thing, we would have eventually gotten to best boobs. Yeah, for sure. And I wish like that may have already existed. Didn't they have like a, like best like best like topless scene or something? Well, they had best best kiss. kiss. I know that. Yeah. And then they would often make them reenact it on stage. I don't remember that, really. I think I don't know if they made them, but I think it happened a few times where like the, the actors would come up and they'd like kiss on stage. Okay, like a kiss on the cheek. That's some, no, they, they could like, be no, they'd congratulating like, they'd each like, other. They'd like reenact the scene. Interesting. They should do that for all the awards. They should. <laughs> like best actor or best supporting it, actor, J.K. Simmons, get up on stage and yell, hey, call your mother. Shut the fuck up about that. <laughs> yell at us all. You know how they have, uh, what, at the, at the Oscars, they have like the last year's best supporting actor hand out and announce uh, best supporting uh, actress yeah. next year. They got to make out. No, the, the, what they got to do is just throw away that rule and make the best supporting actress winner from Minari. Uh, present every Always, year. Yeah. <laughs> ah, God. She's only been on that stage like three times, and every time she gets up there, she's like, what the fuck's going on? I don't know this. I'm older than a lot of you, and I don't speak English as well. Hmm. It just ne- but you fuckers ne- got something up your sleeve. Never has a plan. Yeah. Just <laughs> always just ends up there and, and has the best time, and everybody falls in love with her. Hey, speaking of love, do you know that uh, Taylor Lautner's wife is named Taylor Lautner. I did know that. What? Yeah, yeah, I did know that. I just got that from clicking around Wikipedia. I even know her uh, her maiden name. Dome. Yeah. Yeah. Sick, bro. Uh, uh, no, yeah. Like I remember that like being in the news and was like, yeah, she's going to take his name. And become Taylor Lautner? Yeah. Which is funny because he loves da- dating girls named Taylor. This that was, was like my his, next point. That was his ultimate goal. Is that his <laughs> thing? And then I, like, I was like... I haven't dated anybody named David. <laughs> Have I dated any like Deejes or anything? Has Pete got any nope. Pete's there? Not n- not ruling it out, but, like, but I haven't mean, done t- it yet. Taylor is uh, t- Taylor Unisex. goes as uh, Michael Scott would say. It's a bisexual name. <laughs> that's right. It goes uh, both ways. So it could go either way. I can't decide if that's weird, coincidental, or it's coincidental. What? But I think like I think like you at least have to keep the maiden name and hyphenate it, right? Because you can't have, like, Taylor Lautner and Taylor Lautner. You just Taylor Dome Lautner. So I like Lautner Dome. Lautner Dome would be Welcome sick. to the Lautner Dome. <laughs> Although I suppose that works with any name in that and, dome. And it worked for her originally, so it's not that exciting. Taylor. Taylor Dome. Taylor, the, Taylor Welcome dome. to the Taylor Dome. They got to get a thruple with uh, Swift. Taylor Swift Dome? Just He's the, already had that. Ta- got it. Who's to, who's to say? <laughs> Who knows? Well, when was this? This was this must have been around Valentine's Day. It was, yeah. They were young, man. They were like maybe just out of high school. Did they play? Did they date each other in that? Uh, yeah, I, I think believe so. so. Yeah, she was uh, actually she was like a soccer player. Funnily or something. enough, no, I believe she was cheer captain. Oh, I don't know if that was an was Easter she, egg. Was somebody else on the bleachers? Uh, hopefully, for the sake of that team's morale. I know. <laughs> got to have somebody. No up one. There. You got cheerleaders and nobody there. Maybe she was just a bad cheer captain. 
that does i had an idea i uh, always wanted to do a music video that's like uh you know those like live performance videos and it'll mm-hmm. be like shots from a concert it's that but just the whole place is empty and there's like two or three friends maybe there's like a beach ball going on in the crowd well that was like essentially like, like didn't wasn't that a scene in um uh fuck what uh, oh sing street sing eventually street, yeah gets there yeah it's like it's like half half uh it's like empty and then it's full. They have like the juxtaposition or something. It's the juxtaposition. That's uh, right. They, you know, circling F- back says that a lot. No. Oh, yeah. Dave says it all the time. I don't get what the origin of that joke was, but uh, they say it's the juxtaposition and then Dylan gets a little uncomfortable <laughs> or mad about it. Circling back, I feel, probably has a difficult enough time explaining their jokes yeah i like explaining them when i haven't had them explained to me okay i mean this is what our we're looking for we're looking for some um purpose to this podcast so it's a bieber podcast maybe we just explain all the circling back jokes it's a bieber podcast yeah purpose uh, is yes. his uh, album that uh incredible album yeah and then taylor did re- reputation people won't remember this but reputation was taylor being like my turn you just did like purpose that's a cool aesthetic let's do it it was similar yeah but what are more colors to uh to purpose i jumped back into reputation blues. recently and for an album that uh i celebrate or not necessarily celebrate but push on fans to be like hey if you're gonna like taylor give it a chance like try this thing where she took some swings and misses there are a lot more misses on that than i remembered you know what's the best though what red max's version i've been on like a light taylor swift kick uh and the actual red album not this phony baloney the remade thing yeah sounds so 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 much better it's insane but that's i don't have any input on that red you have max you have uh zach bryan on your phone i see i did uh, yeah i was uh i was checking him out like last night oh and it's exactly what i did yeah and i I didn't like listen to anything i like listened like three seconds and i was like yeah this probably isn't for me yeah that's i'm just not really like a country guy the first song was called what's uh Poems and or fr- uh, fear and Fridays, fear and Fridays with a misplaced apostrophe. And I listened to it to make sure he like who knows maybe like somebody said like he could have been talking about TGI, mm-hmm. uh, but no, he's using it plural and putting an apostrophe there. Which I got in a one of my friend groups has a light issue with. And it's become a running joke. I'll say, why the fuck would there be an apostrophe there? Somebody will post something with an apostrophe. I'll send it and say, why the fuck would there be an apostrophe there? And if one of them do it, I'll like send a biting my tongue emoji or whatever. And one of my friends sincerely the other day was like, uh, but if it doesn't matter to the person who's doing it, like, why should it matter to you? And I get that. But I'm like, I, I, I always compare it to pointing out somebody has something in their teeth. And they disagree with that. Yeah, it's just, it's a it's a poor reflection on you. Like you know, right. like and it's the same thing about saying like somebody using like the wrong you, like your, mm-hmm. and like that that bothers me. There's sometimes where I just like won't point it out, but like of course that person should know. That person should know that they're like they're not making themselves look very smart. And I think they would want to know that. I have friends, uh, one of whom is a friend of the podcast, who is like. Tell me the second you see something, like, please, I want to know, I want to present myself. Well. I mean, over the course of our friendship, I've gotten a little smarter because you're, you're a little bit of a stickler for those things. And like it, it, it makes you feel dumb sometimes for like a quick second, but you're glad to have that knowledge. And I, every now and then, I don't know how, and I'm talking like every three years and it's, I don't know if it's like a smart thing. I think it's just like an attention to detail thing. I'll... Some I'll be texting and I'll either have like a weird malapropism or like some homonym or whatever, and I'll read it back and I'll be like, "Wow, that I looked like I was like a child wrote that." So I get that sometimes things will just slip your mind. And there's whatever. been a few times in like our texting where we where we've both been like, "Is, is, is that this? right? Is that is the is this? that the right use?" Yeah, and it's like it's fun to find out. I yeah, I mean <laughs> I Google that shit all the time. There are some. 
there's some ones where kids I know learning why is it's cool. this or whatever, but a lot of times it's like a case by case basis. Google it. Also, I don't know if you've ever discussed this. I never considered myself a good speller, but it just doesn't matter, unfortunately. Because um, it's like not knowing directions. You just have GPS. Yeah, now it does. I actually thought about this like uh, earlier this week. Like, do people get lost anymore? Like, uh, I think getting lost is a dying art. Have you ever had the GPS not working when you're trying to go somewhere? Yes, and that's horrifying. Yeah, that's it's a crazy feeling. I guess it's just being lost. Yeah, but that's not even being lost. That's like that's I don't know. That's kind of like the glitch in the system. Mm. Like getting lost. I remember as a kid, there were a few times that I was driving with my parents, and they'd just be like, "Huh, this none of this looks familiar. I think we wait, we may have gone the wrong way." And, like, that is a wild feeling. And I have never had that feeling in, like, 20 years. Uh, if we were to make a being lost starter pack, <laughs> uh, you know what one of them would be? Uh, turning down the radio. Oh, yeah, definitely. Turn yeah. down the So, like, picture of the, the radio being turned down. Yeah. We'll do, like, a little arrow. Uh, and then just the quote, we're lost, aren't we? Somebody, the other person always says, like, we're lost, aren't we? Yeah, or, like, I think we're lost. <coughs> it's either one of the two. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, I can't remember. Actually, when I was in college, <clears throat> I was trying to drive to Gillette Stadium, and I remember getting lost. Really? Yeah. No uh, raw dog in it? Because, like, uh, in college, you would probably would have had, like maps or something i think this probably would have been a map quest that this, this would be printed printed days. out map quest also did i tell you i'm thinking of getting a printer i have a printer i think i've used it like two times in like two years but you know what when you need a printer it's pretty sick to be like yo i've got a printer so that's the thing should i it's it's kind of like having a pickup truck though mm -hmm. because if you have a printer yeah you got to keep it a secret nobody can yes. none of your friends can know that you have a printer because anytime they need something printed they come to you it's like having a pickup truck and having to help people move i decided the second you said i have a printer i was like hey you're not asking to use it you're not using it and don't let pete even offer it out because that's a slippery slope mm -hmm. especially if you said it right now could you imagine the people on the Patreon that are like, <laughs> uh, I need send my receipts. Stuff. I need my receipts from this year's Patreon subscriptions. Please mail it to me. Oh my God. That would be amazing. Print me some stuff, clown. Come on. Uh, shout out to the people that are on the Patreon, mm -hmm. uh, patreon.com slash listen to brunch. We've had a few signups this week and really, yeah. And we haven't really like, we it's haven't been, been a little dormant. We've been neglecting it a little bit, uh, but for good. <laughs> yes no no not to say like it's better that you're not getting stuff no i'm uh, I, I thought you meant like w like for good we're not oh, touching it again permanently <laughs> 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 patreon.com slash listen to brunch uh we're in like a little sign trend up and comment i heard uh <laughs> i heard this is dead i i heard i'm not getting anything couldn't turn this deal down <laughs> um yeah t uh comment uh dead patreon Whenever they're like people post like video game clips and like the video game playership is is dipping a little bit, a bunch of gamers will like go into the mentions and just comment dead game. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Go, like nobody cares dead game. <laughs> wow. I've been uh, big on I don't know how I came uh, across this, but I was pummeling you with them. Or by the way, uh if anybody's wondering, our Sending each other reels relationship on Instagram is still going extremely strong. We're still sending oh, yeah. each other three to five things that we're coming across if a I, day. If I, uh, I DM you more than I text you. Yeah, no, I think that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's like, it's, it, I wouldn't even say it's like DMing because you're just yeah. sharing. You're just share, sharing reels with no comment. And then it'll, it mostly won't have like a comment in in reply. It'll just be like a like of the reel if we liked it. Yeah. And I, I want you to like in case I haven't liked or been like LMAO and I've just like sent you something one second later. I have for sure. I've watched every single one and I have either I have laughed and or sent it to somebody else as a result love that i saw one yesterday that uh i sent to uh some music pals it was i'm getting a lot of uh a guy like doing a quote-unquote mashup and there's the popular guy that will always be like these two songs will go off in a nightclub and it will be like back in black 
and shape of you and they'll just like they're not the same tempo not the same key it's just an like, abomination brum, 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 brum. and like all the comments will be like he cooked <laughs> uh but i saw one that was like uh what do you think of this mashup and on the because it always says like one song on the left and one song on the right and on the left it was like kick drum pattern and it was like and on the right it was like snare so it was like and all the comments were like, this is going to change everything. But I, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'd say the one I sent you is I came across uh, a dancer who does very realistic uh, NPC videos. Do, they're unbelievable. They are incredible. And it's not just him. It's like him and his friends. Yeah. They have like the perfect janky video game movements down. I got to send you. He got in. He was at like some dance event or something, and they did clearly they were like freestyling this, but they did like NPC versus NPC. Really? And like one of them like pulls out a gun and like does it, and like the crowd is going. I, I would have been fucking screaming. I don't even really still know what NPCs are. I never would have guessed that that guy was a dancer, but it does make sense to like yeah. perfect those movements. So he's been in like, uh, like world robot. Okay. Like competitions, and I mean, it is it's like borderline stupid. How like you forget everything you thought you knew about doing the robot? Yeah, this guy is incredible. Just like little mannerisms that, like the muscle and mind control that you must have. Like you're not a big spinner, but uh, sometimes in spin class they'll be like, okay, now like you're only moving your legs, mm -hmm. keep everything else still, and that. To, that's a, especially when you've been like if you lifting stuff moving stuff around like that's a that's crazy that's a bit of a grind so like, but this guy will be completely still and just like only moving like his like elbow up and down or whatever and it's just fucking crazy man it kind of reminds me uh did you see the video this week uh of the comedian who does the slow-mo soccer celebrations like the control in that was like stunning to me oh yeah because he looks like he's legitimately in slow motion yeah and i thought that was unbelievable the slow little smile yeah thing as like, he's doing it that takes a lot of bodily control lord forgive me i'm about to talk soccer you see that messy feed the other day no I'm, i've been like almost completely out what? on messy in the mls i've seen like two clips dude i i know like a lot of people are like Oh yeah, well, like he's tooling on MLS players. It's just made me look up other messy clips, and I'm like, yo, so he's just always been doing this. Like, it's not a, a yes, he's in a, a North American league that suddenly added him and like three other really good players. So they'll they are a last place team. Not anymore, I don't think. But they'll go up against like the best team. They, they played Cincinnati the other day, who's awesome. And like, just fucking beat them. But he had, he scored on this play, but he just had like the most ridiculous pass I've ever seen in my life. Also, uh, shout out a uh, friend of the podcast, uh, George A. Petrovich. You know who that is? No. Uh, Matt Turner's replacement. Okay. For the Revs. Yeah. Uh, record sale. They sold him to Chelsea. And he's like probably going to be their starter. So is is the are the Revs now just like the MLS Factory. or goalkeeper pipeline? Yeah, they their goalkeeper is their like, goalkeeping coach Kevin Hitchcock was uh, a Premier League goalie, longtime Chelsea uh, keeper. Uh, his two Premier League teams, Nottingham Forest and Chelsea, Chelsea. and he's now got starters. So now in he's the got Premier Nepo League. babies. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I did say, uh, so I do... Uh, the industry plants, right. some might say. So I do, uh, for Boston folks, I don't, I don't know if I've talked about I do a soccer show on uh, 98.5, the Sports Hub, and I, I was talking to Charlie Davies about this. I was like, you know what's crazy neat? Like, what are the odds that both of Kevin Hitchcock's former teams now have players that he coached? And it's like one of those things, like as you're saying it, you hear how stupid you are. And it's like, well, probably has connections, connections at like yeah. both of these places. But yeah, it's uh, right. Yeah, no, th this guy's awesome. He's a fuck. He's like Matt Turner, but I mean, huge. I would love for the Revs to continue being like a English pipeline. Yeah, like that's that's fucking awesome. Uh, like BC is the NFL pipeline offensive for offensive line. linemen. 
Although receivers now, shout out Zay Flowers. Oh, Zay Flowers from BC. Zay Flowers from okay. Boston College. All right. The Patriots could have had him, but instead they took. What's his name? Anthony Gonzalez? Is that the no? Anthony Gonzalez is that was a Colts wide receiver, right? It was a Colts wide receiver who went to BC. BC. Yeah, crazy. Uh, they Christian Gonzalez, cornerback. I don't know. I watched draft day the other day. Had my uh, <laughs> fantasy football auction, so had to watch it with the boys. There you go. What a picture! By the <laughs> way, I'm starting to say uh, WAP to mean what a picture. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I I did um, I did a we're about to have a cinema for the first time this week, and I, I kind of like that. that. I like that a I lot. I kind of like that. Well, well, well. If it isn't <laughs> cinema, yeah, I like that. Um, while we've been talking, the uh, the David Fincher uh, <sighs> Fastbender was it called the Killer? The Killer. The Killer. Not the Killers. That's Brandon Flowers stuck in his own. Day. It came out when you were young. <laughs> oh, no. got him. I do like that it was like the from the Gone Girl guy, and I'm like, yo, just put like Fincher X Fastbender. Don't show anything. Yeah, and I'm jumping up and down. Uh, I've been waiting for Fastbender Redemption. Uh, comeback Fastbender. Because I mean, like. He's he's done other stuff since, but like the first thing that pops into That's my mind so is the true. snowman. Yes, like that was like his big thing. Like here comes Michael Fassbender. He's about to explode. Oh shit! He made the worst movie ever. <laughs> I do believe though, and correct me if I'm wrong. The loan, and or on my end to you, where I've said, "Hey, watch this, watch this, watch this," and you've never seen it. Maybe you have seen it. And I'm about to feel bad. Is Frank? You never saw Frank, right? I don't think I saw Frank, no. Frank is... I love it. I think that you would love it. Michael Fassbender plays the front man of an indie band who is extremely indie and that like nobody knows him. And Donald Gleason joins the band and is I'm having a hard in. time <laughs> fitting in. And there's all this mystery around Frank. And as you'll see in the picture... Frank wears a paper mache head. What? Yeah, that's that was a twist. So like the whole movie, you're, you're, you are not seeing Fassbender. That's crazy. Yeah, it's Michael Fassbender in a paper mache head. That's oh, that's wild. I did not see that twist coming whatsoever. No, wait. Look at this cast though. You, All it right. is so up your alley. It's Fassbender, Donald Gleason. Scoot. Scoot McNeary? Yes. Dude, hell yeah. He's like the other guy. And Maggie Gyllenhaal's finest performance, which I know could be argued isn't Low saying bar. much. Yeah. Uh, but she's great in this movie. Okay. Uh, I'm not far off, by the way. Uh, Fassbender's last movie was 2019. Midsommar. No. <laughs> I The other day... I you could asked myself that he was what in... year that came out, and I felt so embarrassed because I was like, "That was like our meme, yeah. for a while." Uh, Dark Phoenix was his last movie, and that was the the X Men movie that bombed, and oh. he was basically just like kind of tied to the X Men universe. Mm. Um, so before that, like we can throw that one out the window. Before that, his last movie was The Snowman. Wow! Uh, and then he did. Uh, then he was in the Alien Covenant, and then the Assassin's Creed movie. Like this dude has been doing nothing. Do you think that having to play Frank and then having to endure the whole Snowman experience it just kind of like, like, like rocked him a little bit? It, it may have may have left him shook. Yeah, and then David Fincher came calling, and he was like. You're I, kill I some should people, do this. Brother. I should do this. Uh, you, I'm 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 very much rooting for Fastbender. Yeah, very much rooting for Fastbender. You mentioned uh, you mentioned Phoenix. I told some people uh, the states thing that we did last week. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very well received. Very fun game to play. Lot like very good group game to throw. Like hey, Hawaii and Alaska, forty nine and fifty. What's 48? Yeah. See where people go. Uh, one of my friends said, this is what you should be podcasting about. And I said, buddy, that's where it came from. Thanks you for listening. 
Uh, yeah, I will say, and I, I every time I bring this up, I sing your praises mightily because okay. I say Pete said, "Is it something like New Mexico?" Mm-hmm. Which the answer to that question is yes. Yeah. It then took you a second to figure out what that then meant, but we got to Arizona. Yeah. I don't know what I would... I would have just been so thrown for a loop. I just, like, assumed that it was, like... It, I mean, it's it's not going to be anything, like, on the outskirts, you know? Right. Like, it has to be something that, like, belonged to Mexico. We yeah. probably took it from another country <laughs> that wasn't England. So, USA probably USA. Mexico. Anyway, uh, I saw... I, I saw Gran Turismo. Yeah, I was going to ask you how how that was. I really liked it. Did you? I really liked it. It was too long, but... How long is it? Like over two, two hours. hours. Yeah, it's like two uh. hours, 15. That should be... If that could just be like 150, that, sweet. That's not like a prestige action movie. Like, <laughs> that yeah. you only get to go over two hours if you're like a prestige action movie. Or like you're a established franchise. Mm. But Orlando Bloom, awesome. David Harbour is just perfect to play the now look i don't believe in you but really i believe in you and we're gonna make this thing work out okay. i don't know that's not what david harbour's voice pl- i bet like, he plays a father figure he's big time yeah. father figure uh and uh my guy from midsomar who i looked up his wikipedia page and his wikipedia page was like so and so is the guy from midsomar who uh the main character uh wait are you talking are you talking about um uh the guy from sing street no. What guy from Sing Street is in Midsommar? Isn't the, the her toxic boyfriend from Midsommar? Doesn't he play Oh, no. The brother? You're thinking, oh, uh, Jack Rayner? Yeah. No, so ja- uh, so Midsom- Jack Rayner is in both Sing Street and Midsommar. Yeah. He plays the toxic boyfriend, though, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm talking about Gran Turismo, though. And uh, the... Yeah, but you said the main character in Midsommar. No, uh, the main character oh, of I, that's uh, where Gran I got, Turismo. That's where I got my letters. Uh, the... Main character in Gran Turismo is played by... He's a British guy. Archie uh, Mataqui. Let me get a look at him. He is... He plays Simon in Midsommar. Oh, yeah, okay. He's the guy that sees the Atestupa and mm-hmm. says, uh, fat chance I'm staying. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, cool, come here. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> He With his, his girl. girlfriend, yeah, yeah. That's so tough. I wish they didn't kill people as much in that movie as they did. Yeah, it's a big part of that movie. I they wish it was love killing people. I wish it was like um, Legends of the Hidden Temple, where just like some guys come out and they're just like, oh, mm-hmm. and just like kind of like take them you. away. Yeah. I always was thrown by at the end of that show when everybody waves goodbye. Those kids who get taken away aren't there. That's true. It's like, where did they take them? That's true. We should do like a so like go in the wrong room. Report. And the guys come. Damn! Now I'm thinking about that. That would be a sick, uh, a sick movie, like a sick twisted movie, mm-hmm. Legends of the Hidden Temple, but like a gritty, a gritty one, gritty yes, Legends of the Hidden Temple, gritty reimagining of it. Because I was scared of that that show when I was a kid. Yeah, so what if they just take you away in like it's like classic movie sequence? The like the lights come on. Mm. Mm. You wake up, you're tired, you're sitting in a chair, and you're like, where am I? And they're like, we are going to make you do the steps of knowledge for 10 hours straight. You're like, mm. well, I was like, what if they did like a Legends of the Hidden Temple, like sort of like Saw crossover? Yeah. Where like, it's like, now the games really begin. You're playing for your life. Speaking of Saw, did you see that Miguel got like, uh, yes, oh God, hooks put oh, on my his back? God. I was like, I saw, yo, like Saw 6 ass. I saw that pop up on my feed, and I really don't do well with, like, ha- like hanging no, like, who skin. No, could? Like, th- what a psycho. Like, <laughs> yeah, bad. <laughs> There's, we, we, they, we throw around, like, oh, psychopath move quite a bit, but, mm. like, that's a psychopath move. Ugh. No need for it. Bad. Just use a harness, Miguel. Bad. Uh, Gran Turismo. Very fun, enjoyable experience. Made me want to get a simulator you did say i'm gonna take uh x amount of money from the brunch account and then <laughs> i said cool go for it and then like un, un 
you didn't get the response you wanted and you're like yeah i'm buying a racing simulator <laughs> no that, that's not the uh that, that, that was a, that was a fine response yeah but like you i sent the day before you were like uh well hey, yeah I'm i guess it would be it would be inappropriate for me to be like why what are you using it for <laughs> yeah <laughs> no yeah so not to peek behind the the curtain but we have a brunch uh we have a shared bank account where uh if whether it's Patreon or whatever, we'll toss money into there so we can get whatever we need for the podcast. And very, very infrequently, we'll just pay ourselves and uh, it, it will just go like this. Like, hey, I'm going to take X amount from the brunch account. And then the other person will be like, cool, I will too then. Yeah. And then we wait until we have enough money to pay the bills on these things so you would send like hey i'm gonna take this amount and uh whenever i take something out of the brunch account it's usually because i want to get like a little toy or something like that and then the next day after you had taken some out there was a toy i wanted so i was like oh i'm gonna take this out but then i thought i was like oh i could make the toy the, like the, the gaming top of the line. simulator thing. <laughs> yeah. The movie starts with him getting like a new wheel, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Oh, I'm going to steer better with this." I I bought a wheel oh uh like a couple of years ago. It's very hard. Really? It's very hard to use. Yeah. Man, I'll. T- it looks. It makes the whole Gran Turismo thing look very fun. And yeah. this s- story apparently, or the movie took. Massive liberties. I would assume so. The only thing that they kept in that was true is that he kills somebody. Jesus. Fucking did not see that coming in this movie. Holy shit. May contain spoilers. (laughs) In one of his races, he gets in an accident and somebody, a a spectator dies. Yikes. And he's like, I'm quitting. And they're like, you can't quit now. And I'm like, this seems like the time to quit. No. Okay. He like, I'm sure went through all sorts of anguish and uh then kept going in the movie they make it part of the build up to he's got to race uh le mans le mans yeah and i i say this every time i see a racing movie i'm just like this is my genre i feel like you could get into f1 it is crazy people my, love f1 dude i have some family that's into f1 and when i say that for some reason it sounds like i'm like oh i have family in florida but like i have like northeast now it sounds like I'm saying people in New Hampshire. <laughs> Get stereotypes out of your heads, folks. Uh, I have uh, a Boston-based family who got into No, F1. like there, there's a shitload of people who got into F1 after that Netflix series came out, Drive to Survive. Yeah. It, which, that guy. You know how I loosely keep up with uh, Drive F1? Drive to Survive, other people. Is, uh, you know, sometimes like you'll be aware of something just because someone you follow or one of your friends on social media posts enough about it. Yeah. I think that Smeddy... Old Smetty? Jessica. Oh, Smetana? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is a big F1 person. Okay. So I'll like see clips from their show and I feel like I know like five race car driver names. I know Lewis Hamilton. I know Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen, I know. I know. Um, I think that might be it. Hmm. By the way, I got a text back from a source on Zach Bryan because I said, who the fuck is Zach Bryan? Yeah. And a uh, uh, friend said, he's kind of like a young Isbell type, I guess. That kind of country. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I like Isbell for the most part. I like Isbell a yeah. lot. Yeah. I like when he riles people up online. <laughs> That's right. I like, I like when he pisses off the right. We got to talk about... Uh, Wait, are you going to actually get into uh, to racing video games? Uh, probably not. Yeah, uh, that's a bummer. I told you, I've been going to Guitar Center before the podcast. I'm I go to Guitar Center now, like a guy who's working on something goes to Home Depot. <laughs> I go and I pick up like one small thing, and I'm like, nice. Now it's almost complete. And it's like, what's almost complete? A room with a bunch of shit in it. <laughs> Just you, a bunch I, of things that don't go together. I feel like we're kind of like steering into our uh, respective uh, hobbies lately you're big into the music toys i've been getting very into video games again love it brother i i have been working on something that you'll see soon Mm. and i brought it up to my therapist recently and i was like hey this is a thing that 
I've been working on when I've had a minute, and there is zero quantifiable payoff to it. <laughs> I could be using this energy for this, this, or this, but this is a thing that amuses me, and it's a lot of work, but I'm happy to do it. And my therapist was like, I am very, very glad that you're doing that and not just only thinking uh, in terms of like, what can this be, be a doing? YouTube video? Can this be whatever? Because she was like, you're, she's like, you'll always need to have something that entertains either just you or like just a small group of people, even if you're doing something that a lot of people enjoy or whatever, like you're always going to want to be balancing it with something else. Like when mm -hmm. you're doing sports stuff, sports stuff, sports stuff, you're like, all right, I, well, I also want to do a pop culture podcast mm -hmm. or like what? I think a lot of people are like that. It's like, I guess kind of like work life balance. Yeah. It's stuff, removing but, yourself from the thing that you're doing all the time. But like my f idea of fun is like, also very close to content sort of stuff so uh anyway yeah i've just been you're a real one for me one for them kind of guy regular uh regular like, john mayer but it's like three for you and one for them it's like th three for me two of which i don't end up doing <laughs> because they are going to be so fucking annoying about it so i'll do one for them one for me and then i'm mad at them because i'm like those two other ones would have been so much fucking better <laughs> it's your fault that you god you all fucking stay inside the lines uh we got to talk about the screaming fan because there's okay, a new yeah. screaming fan at a concert screen and, fan uh, update pete is the uh foremost authority on screaming fans <laughs> at concerts that's uh, right so as we discussed, there was a screaming fan at a Taylor Swift concert screaming the bridge to Cruel Summer, taking a video of themselves. And I was not about it. And the Taylor Pete, fans were. Pete not was not happy about it. Uh, now, this has happened at an Adele concert where somebody was standing up, filming themselves, singing along to every word. But the wrinkle, and I think this is why we're going to like this person, it's a, it's a man. So uh, no harm, no foul, where I'm concerned. That's right. Uh, how do, Looks good to me. Yeah. <laughs> Open and shut case, boys. <laughs> Let's get the next one. What? Little girl at Disney on Ice is jumping up and down. Prison. <laughs> get in. He's good. But, Leave him alone. <laughs> and her dad is going just as crazy. Well, he drove them all there. This is okay. <laughs> That's right. No, I mean, this guy, the only part of this video that bothered me was that this guy was filming himself, especially with a 360 degree camera. It looked like mm. don't film yourself during an entire show. It looked like it was like a, a like a setup. Like it, it, it wasn't like him holding his phone for like a couple seconds. I would be willing to bet that this guy was like filming himself for the entire show, which is a bit annoying. And I hate when people do that. So this person, from what I've read, is a TikToker. I don't know if they're a popular TikToker. We have to start classifying those things because a lot of people have TikTok. If I go do something silly, are people going to be like, pothead TikToker, DJ Bean, blah, blah. And they check my account and they're like, he's got like 600 followers. <laughs> he's not a TikToker. He's just a person with an account. He's a guy with an account. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to start calling myself an Instagram. So I'm guessing that that person was like live streaming the show on TikTok, mm -hmm. which, oh, God. Oh, I hate that shit. I don't know. Yeah, maybe they were doing that. I did that. I saw that somebody in front of me do, was doing that at a Blink-182 concert like five or six years ago. Just like fucking Facebook streaming it. And it's like, who's enjoying that? You can't hear that shit. Like, a regular it sounds Antonio horrible. Uh, Why did you do that? He live streamed the Steelers locker room after they won a playoff game. A lot of dicks. And a lot of like... The head coach of an NFL team being like, okay, we got the Patriots next. Here's our strategy, gang. Oh, and Antonio no. Brown's like, uh, what's up, everybody? Like and subscribe. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> uh, yeah, so like the, the only thing that bothered me, the only thing that this guy did wrong was just filming himself. Like he was standing up singing at a concert and the pe people behind him were like, sit down. And it's like, no, stand up. You're at a fucking concert. I loved his spirit. 
and I hate to say I didn't love the spirit with the other <laughs> Taylor Swift person, but I loved his spirit. He was just, he you could just tell he was having the time of his life. And yes, he was standing up where people were mostly seated. I am a don't recline on airplanes type of person, but with the standing up at a concert thing, I'm that's like, gotta be if, the expectation. Yeah. I you can stand and I know that in a lot of cases and I've been at shows where everybody's seated and the artist has been like hey you guys are all probably seated because maybe the people behind you or whatever like we're expecting all of you to be standing if you can not yeah. like a Kanye well, West I mean, kind of way but, but it's but, like yeah but it's like um remember that mm, I don't think so Kanye was like I want everybody standing up everybody stand up Listen, motherfucker. A wheelchair person. Wheelchair yeah, person. God damn it. Um, <laughs> uh, I feel like uh, an Adele show in Vegas, mm -hmm. it's probably a lot of older people, and mm -hmm. they're probably sitting down. It's probably a lot of like older people that are just like, they just like Adele, but they're kind of boring. And that's pro that was probably the scene. But still, like, it's not that guy's fault that he was young and into it. I went to an Eagles concert with my dad, and... My dad is uh, older than I am, and the older crowd likes to sit down at a concert every once in a while. Front row loge. That's what you got to do. Yeah. Just, and if people behind us were standing, I hope they were. Uh, quite frankly, I love the Eagles, and I love standing at concerts. I don't hate sitting for, like, a, I kind of wanted we, to be sitting for we that. We sat at the Grateful Dead. For quite a bit, yeah. But that's that was um, the uh, the space the space the drum time, yeah drums space. Oh man, I was singing the praises of that show to. Uh, I went to a concert last week. I saw Bruce Springsteen Ooh, at Gillette baby. Stadium, dude. We didn't talk about it. It was the fucking best. I we our seats were fucking incredible. Uh, saw friend of the podcast Jeff Lowe. Hell yeah, friend of the podcast Matt McCarthy. Do you know Alex Barth? I uh, heard the name, yeah. Do you know? Have you ever met Kirk? I have, yeah. He's been in this this house. That's right. He came yeah. on, yeah. Uh, so saw a bunch of uh, friends, newish and old. Uh, was cool. I was only with Kirk for a little bit, but Bruce Springsteen means a lot to a lot of people. Nobody, and not not that Kirk is like baseball writery about it, but just like that's like his fucking guy. Yeah, and like he doesn't enjoy a lot of things. So <laughs> when he does, I'm like, cool. It's cool that Kirk has something that he loves. I like. I was glad to to be there for like Bruce Springsteen coming out and seeing all of these diehards being like Bruce. They all. I mean, you've seen him before. Like one by one, they come out. Yeah, and I just recently really got into this band, so seeing them. One by one, be like, oh, I love that person. I love that person. I love that person. Now it's fucking Bruce Springsteen. True story. I didn't actually see them coming on stage the first time that I saw him. Oh, because really? we got there a, like a little late. I don't think it was too late to see them come out. But uh, we parked pretty far away. We walked to the security line, and they wouldn't let Ellen's bag in. So we had to. I had to walk back to the car. Was this at Gillette? Yeah. They are notorious. Yeah. And They're famously, I kind of work there. So shout out Gillette Stadium. But uh, a lot of people have tough times getting in with bags. Yeah, so I had to walk back, and I ended up missing like the first like song or two. Do you remember the story of us trying to get into the 1989 tour, The Lines? I uh, know. I retell this story pretty frequently. So you, me, in front of the podcast, Mike, were, uh, we made our tailgate for the 1989 tour. We, was brunch happened. Yeah, brunch had to have been on. Yes. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we made our tailgate a dad trap. Yep. And we put up stuff that like dads who were there with their daughters would like. Yeah, it was like we were like their escape hatch. A lot of like cornhole looking for a fourth kind of <laughs> vibes. And we were just kind of loudly saying like, oh, looking for a fourth. And I think we got like one dad. We got one dad, but we got like a we got a group of pretty cool like young adults. So like 20 minutes before we were planning on going in, the group next to us, which looked like a lot of fun. We were too busy. We were like, hey, look, we're looking for dads here. <laughs> uh, somehow we ended up connecting with this group. And it was like a, where have you been all my life? We all hit it off so well. I do remember this, yeah. And we were like, you They're, know they what? They had pickup trucks going yeah, on. Yeah, and we yeah. were like, oh, you know what we ought to do? 
we should get fucked up. <laughs> so then we started partying with these people hard. And uh, then we're like, oh, wait, we got to get in. Got to get to the show. Heim's about to go on. Uh, well, actually, first it was, was it Vance Joy? It was Vance Joy and then Heim. Yeah. yeah so we're, we get in line. We get to the front of the line. They're like, oh, you have, Lord forgive me, you have club seats. Uh, you need to go to the line to the left. So we wait in another line, get to the front, and they're like, oh, I understand your confusion, but you have club seats, and the the real club line is, like, you essentially we got go in the, the same corner. line. What you have to do is be, like, in a to-the-left section or whatever. Okay. So go around the corner. So we're in the third line. Do you, you don't remember what I, happened? I remember that we had, like, a like a private stairwell or something. Uh, yeah, well, it was just, like, Club at Gillette is... Pretty nice, but we were uh, so we're in the third line. Yeah, and I say, I swear to God, if we miss, oh, if we're late for Heim, yes. And the person behind us was like, actually, it's pronounced Haim, and yes. you were like, oh, buddy, I've had three Jello shots, <laughs> and I've got something for you. There it is. Uh, trains never let. Yeah, I was like, man, I. You're like, now we're going to be late because I have to Heimsplan. <laughs> or like do a little like jail pit stop. <laughs> I was, I don't see red often, but I was like, oh boy, I ain't talking. I ain't feeling 22 when I'm saying <laughs> I am seeing red right now. Uh, but yeah, what a great time. I loved seeing people hear Heim for the first time and being like, whoa. Yeah, they were good. They rock. Yeah. Cool. Um. So, uh, the screaming fan, uh, thumbs up. <laughs> he thumbs up for this sure. This is a good one. Can't can't put our finger on why, but uh, he, he's the man. Like this one. 